The peeping caddis is tied to suggest the case caddis larva with its head and legs protruding from its case. For many years I used Hans van Klinken's lead head nymph, which I came across in a couple of books in the mid 90s. I had a lot of success with the lead head nymph, but when I started using jig hooks more, I tied this version, and this is the one I use now. So I'm tying this on a size 12 jig hook with a 3.5mm slotted tungsten bead. I'm just going to tie the thread in behind the bead, and to stop it sliding about on the hook, I'll just build up the thread tight in behind the bead. Once I'm happy with that, I'll start coming down the hook towards the bend in touching turns. I'll just get to there and snip away the unwanted thread and then I'm going to carry on down the hook to the bend. Now I'll stop just before the bend of the hook and then I'm going to use some suede chenille to represent the caddis larva sticking out of the uh, case. So I'll take a length of chenille and seal and singe the end with a lighter. Now I'm going to cut it to length Place it on top of the hook and tie it in. I don't like the head sticking out too far, so I use the bend of the hook as a gauge. Uh, so I normally have it level with or just slightly further out than the bend of the hook. So I'll just tie that down and then I'm ready for the hackle to represent the legs. I use either woodcock or partridge for the legs. And if you don't have any feathers with short enough fibres. What I normally do after preparing the feather is try to gauge the length of the fibres and wind back down the hook shank with the thread and then either lay the feathers against the hook or fasten the hackle in, stroke the fibres back and hold them and gauge the length that way. If they were too long I'd unfasten and rewind further down, but they're okay. So now I'll just fasten that in with another couple of wraps and snip away that. A few more wraps and now I'll wind the hackle in. So I'll get a hold of it with the pliers, hold it up, stroke those back and wind that in. And I'll keep stroking back as I wind in. Or wind on I should say. Once I've used those fibres up, I'll secure it on the hook. Snip away that stub and I'll spread the fibres out around the head to represent the legs of the caddis. Once I'm happy, I'll stroke those back and tie them in. As I wind down the shank towards the bend, the fibres are being pulled into the chenille which will make them stick out to give what I think is a better representation of the legs. Once I'm at that point, if the fibres are a bit matted I'll pull them apart and maybe spread them round a little bit so they the round the head a bit more. Once I'm happy with the position of the fibres I'm ready to apply the dubbing and start building the uh, body or case of the fly. Now it's just a case of applying dubbing little and often and building that body. Um, I normally use the bead as a gauge and I'll build the body so it's level if you want with the bead so you've got a, a relatively smooth transition from body to bead. I'll just keep adding dub into the thread and build up the body of the fly until I'm happy. At this point I'd just like to say that some 
might argue that the fly would be a bit more durable with the addition of a rib. And I couldn't argue with that. But if I was honest, I've never bothered with a rib on these flies and I've never had an issue with durability. And that's why I don't do it. So that's looking just about there. So what I like to do now is whip finish. And if you want, you could finish the fly off at this point. But what I like to do is just whip finish and then either add a generous dab of varnish or super glue and then hide that area of thread with some more dubbing and do another whip finish with a bit of dubbing on the thread. So here we go, just add a bit more dubbing. I'll do two or three turns to cover that up. And then with the remainder of that dubbing on the thread, I'll just do a whip, another whip finish. Now I'll snip the thread away. At this point you can either leave the fly like that and have a shaggy peeping caddis or as I prefer to do nowadays you can cut away those long fibres and have a smooth finish. I don't think it matters either way it's just a personal preference uh, it doesn't affect the fly's effectiveness. When I used to fish uh, Hans van Klinken's leadhead nymph I fished both smooth and shaggy versions and they both were very effective flies. But I've snipped this one away and that's it finished. This is a nickel bead on this fly uh, but I do use other colours like black, silver and copper and they all work. And although I only use green or white chenille to suggest the head of the lava, you could use other colours, brighter colours for coloured water or for grayling fishing. And as far as fishing is concerned, I fish it in a variety of ways from traditional upstream nymphing to high sticking, Czech nymphing and French leaders, or as many call it nowadays, Eurostyle nymphing. The peeping caddis has been a very effective pattern for me over the years, so I hope it works as well for you if you try it. And tight lines.